Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, God Talked to Jeremiah, Dr. McLuhan shares how God changed Jeremiah's life from a priest to a prophet and used him to speak to rulers of the world. The story of how God called Jeremiah to serve him as a prophet demonstrates the power of listening to God's voice. When God speaks, it's best to listen and to the best of your ability, say, yes, Lord, to whatever he asks you to do. The voice of God put great boldness in Jeremiah, boldness that he never imagined that he could have. Jeremiah changed from being a person with doubts and fears into a person with great boldness in the Holy Spirit. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. God said to Jeremiah, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too difficult for me? What a great question. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 27. In time, Jeremiah was able to respond to that statement by God by saying himself, Ah, Lord God, it is you who has made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm, and nothing is too difficult for you. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. And so no matter what you are facing, the words of Jeremiah encourage us today that nothing is too difficult for God. Your impossibility is simple for God, and he wants to help you, and he wants to be involved in your most difficult and complex question. After God changed the direction of Jeremiah's life, he became one of the most influential prophets before the destruction of the temple 585 years before Christ. This cylinder tells us about that. Jeremiah is the one who said that one day the Jews would return from captivity in Babylon back to Jerusalem. And this cylinder that can still be read today uh, confirms the prophecies that prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah, excuse me, made. Now, Jeremiah is mentioned over 140 times in the Bible, all the way from 2 Kings through into the New Testament Gospel of Matthew, where his name is recorded. Uh, He is the one who foretold that Jesus would be sold for 30 pieces of silver. The Arabic word for Jeremiah is Irmia. Uh, He is not named in the Quran, although there are mentions of Jeremiah in some of the traditional writings of Islam. Jeremiah prophesied for 40 years to the last of the five kings of Judah. He sent prophetic words to seven, uh, to 15 nations. God used him in an amazing way to send messages to kingdoms around the world. He was not taken to captivity like the prophets Daniel and Ezekiel were. Uh, rather, he was uh, taken uh, and kidnapped and taken by Jewish people fleeing from Jerusalem and going down into Egypt. He said, don't do that. They did it anyway, and they took him with him. And in ancient Cairo, there's a memorial tomb commemorating the life of Jeremiah. I have visited this tomb on a couple of occasions. Now, how did all of this happen? Let's go back to the beginning and learn how God changed the direction of Jeremiah's life. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 1. We begin looking at verse 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests who are Anath in the land of Benjamin. And Jeremiah's dad, his granddad, his great great granddad, all the way back to Aaron himself, they were all priests. And of course, there was no question that Jeremiah was going to be a priest. It was in the family line. It was the family heritage. Jeremiah knew for as long as he could remember that one day I'll do what my dad does. I'll follow in his footsteps and I will become a priest. Well, this is the town that he was from. He was raised in Anathoth, which is uh, from the tribe of Benjamin and just about four or five miles north of Jerusalem. And God called him in the 13th year of a very famous godly 
king by the name of Josiah, and that was 620 years, seven years before the birth of Jesus, God spoke to Jeremiah and said, I'm changing your mission in life. Now, everything for Jeremiah was going forward as usual. He would go and sing and do all the things that were being done in the temple that he could do as a young boy until the day that he heard God speaking to him directly. This is what Jeremiah wrote. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4. Now this simple phrase, the word of the Lord came to me, is, uh, is found in the book of Jeremiah over 58 times. It's just a, a constant theme in the book that God wants to speak to Jeremiah and he wants to speak to you. Jeremiah did not hear from an angel. He heard directly from God. God wants to speak to you as well. The voice of God changes everything. The voice of God brings clarity. The voice of God breaks fear. The voice of God puts boldness in our spirits. The voice of God answers our basic questions about life. Who am I? Where did I come from? What does God want me to do to bring glory to him? Jeremiah heard God say these words, so remarkable. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Powerful words. God made four things very clear to Jeremiah. He said, I knew you, I formed you, I consecrated you, and I have appointed you. And what he did for Jeremiah is for what he does for everyone else as well. God saw Jeremiah in his mother's womb. What a marvelous thought that is. I was preaching on this subject a number of years ago in India, and through the message, the Lord touched the heart of one of the powerful ministry leaders that we have worked with in that country. And he marveled at this thought, that while he was still in his mother's Hindu womb, God saw him and called him out to follow Jesus. God set him apart before he was even born. His parents uh, didn't come to know Lord until much later in life, uh, but he was the first out of that family because God saw there might be some people in this room who are the first in your family to follow Jesus. There may be some people watching us today. You're the very first one in your family to follow Jesus. It's because God saw you in your mother's womb and he called you to do some work for him. Uh, through his life, this uh, Indian brother's life, Thousands of unreached people in a certain tribe in India have come to know Jesus as their Savior. I've had the joy of meeting that very first one who followed Jesus, listened to him testify and listened to him sing over the years of traveling to India. And when God eventually called that ministry leader home for his reward in heaven, I was invited to fly to India just to preach that man's funeral. What a blessing and what a strong memory it is for me to celebrate God's calling, God's seeing, God's anointing, and God's setting apart men and women for the purposes that God has for us. Each person listening to this message has been formed by God. You're not an accident. You're not chemistry. You're uh, the creation of the hand of God. And God gave Jeremiah an image of what it is like to be formed by God's hands. God said to Jeremiah, like clay in the potter's hands, so you are in my hands. Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 6. And each one of us in this room are being shaped and molded by our heavenly father to be the person that he created us to be and to flow through our lives to bring glory to him. Just like Jeremiah, each of us have been formed by the hands of a loving Heavenly Father. He knows everything about us, and he wants to use us to bring glory to him. Uh, Jeremiah was consecrated before he was born to serve the Lord. Now, of course, it took time for 
Jeremiah to understand that, and those of us who walked with the Lord for a while understand that we don't know everything about God has done when we're first born, when we first come, and we discover that there are many plans that he has for us. As Jeremiah would come to teach us, they are good plans. The Apostle Paul understood exactly what Jeremiah was talking about. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 15, we read, He who set me apart before I was born called me by his grace. And we know that the Apostle Paul spent the first half of his life and, and many years persecuting Christians and going against the will of God. But eventually, his eyes were opened to see the hand of God in his own life, and he came to testify, before I was born, God called me. Like Jeremiah, we are called to take the message of Jesus to the nations of the world, to every tribe, every tongue, and every language. Now, all of this must have been very overwhelming to Jeremiah. Can you imagine getting all of this information? The whole course of your life is, be, is going, about to be altered. So the Lord said to him, Ah, Lord, behold, I don't know how to speak. I am only a youth. This is what Jeremiah said in response to what he heard from God. Now, the Lord was very firm with him. He said, I know you don't understand, but listen, listen to me carefully. He replied to him by saying, do not say I'm only a youth. For all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7, that's when it's time to say, yes, sir. You may not understand it all, and you may have certain fears, as I did, and as God works in our lives, he's so patient with us. But God was firm, I will send you, and you should say what I tell you to say. Now, we should not think of Jeremiah as like we think of as Samuel, as a four or five young lad who was uh, spoken to by God. Uh, God uh, called him at a very young age, but it appears that Jeremiah was significantly older, perhaps even 30 years old, approaching his 30th birthday. I say that because the sons of Aaron, their formal training began when they were 20, and it went on for 10 years. Can you imagine? It took a whole 10 years before you were ready to officially serve as a priest. At that moment, you would be sanctified and set apart as a priest in the temple and the house of God. And I believe it's in that transition moment in Jeremiah's life that God began to speak to him. When Jeremiah said, I don't know how to speak, it could be that he had a speech impediment. And some listening to this message may have a speech impediment. When God called my father to serve overseas or to serve or to be a pastor, uh, he stuttered badly. And many said to him, you could not be a pastor. Even the Bible school said so to him. But he knew that God had called him. And not just called him to preach, called him to preach in Africa. He went to South Africa in 1949, spent 30 years overseas sharing the message of God, the love of God with Indian people. And he was not freed until he got there. And sometimes God waits for us to obey and take the next step before he gives us the next thing that we need. Now, Dad shared with me that when I was about five years old, I began to stutter. I have no recollection of that. It's just a testimony he has shared with me. And knowing how much he suffered, he took a day to pray and to fast that God would set me free from a stammering tongue or a lip. Now, like my dad, I've had some problems that I've had to overcome, but stuttering is not one of them. By the grace of God, he helps us. I'm grateful for mom and dad's prayers for me, and I'm sure you're grateful for the prayers of your parents as well. And when God calls people to follow him, he doesn't look at their disabilities. He sees in them what others don't see in them. God sees what we can do while Satan tries to point out what we can't do. God specializes in using people who are aware of their need for his intervention in their lives. 
I can't tell you how many times I've been overseas in a big convention and say, God, I just can't do this. God, I just can't do this. And every time that happens, I have to remember the anointing is not there. It's here. And I've been so amazed where I've just taken these few 10 feet steps and stood behind the podium and the anointing comes. That's how God works. When we need him most, he is there. And when Jeremiah said, I don't know how to speak, he could be talking about the difference between the vocabulary of priests and the vocabulary of prophets. This is an important distinction to understand. Priests were trained to listen to the people. And after we confessed our sins, people came confessing their sins over the lamb that they, that they brought to sacrifice. The priests would speak to God on their behalf. But prophets, on the other hand, spoke to people on behalf of God. It's a different vocabulary. Prophets were trained to listen to the voice of God and to speak to people what God said to them. And so the mindset of the priest and the mindset of the prophet are two very different things. Priests needed to know the law, but prophets needed to know the ways of God, the will of God for kings, nations, and people. So kings would inquire of prophets to know the mind of God before major decisions were taken, especially it relates to war. And there's story after story where kings would complain uh, that the prophets were just saying what they wanted to hear or, or a prophet would never say what the king wanted to hear and he'd get mad at the prophet. And so it was very challenging to make sure you were hearing from God. And prophets were accountable to God uh, to say what God wanted them to say and not to say what the king may have wanted to hear. So prophets faced a tremendous amount of pressure. You could see why Jeremiah would hesitate and say, I, 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 I can't do that. <laughs> this is what the Lord said to him. Do not be afraid of them, referring to the kings. I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 8. And so when we say what we hear God say, we can always say it lovingly and kindly and gently, but we can't sugarcoat it. Uh, because what God says is what God says. You know, Jeremiah uh, did not say he was afraid. We were just speculating that he was afraid. But when God says, don't be afraid, it usually means God knows you're afraid. And so if you're afraid, even though you haven't said it, God knows. And when we are, make a new assignment, when a change comes in our life and God asks us to do something we've never done before, People feel afraid and people feel inadequate. I can't do that. And yet the adequacy of God comes as we lean into him. When God calls you to a new assignment, he releases the courage that you and I need and the ability to rise and face that challenge. And God helped Jeremiah by physically touching his mouth. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 9. Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth, the Lord said to me, Behold, I've put your words in, my, in, in your mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 9. And so let me ask, who is hungry for a fresh touch from the Lord today? I believe the Lord's touching people right now. I believe he's touching people in this room. I believe he's touching people watching online. Several years ago, the Lord touched my mouth at Brooklyn Tabernacle Church in New York, and what a blessing it was to attend that Tuesday night prayer meeting. People were waiting in line for an hour just to get in and to be in that room and to feel the touch of God coming upon me. I've never gotten over that experience. My thinking and my speaking has not been the same. And God gave Jeremiah a larger task than he could ever imagine, and that's why he needed a touch from God. I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up, to break down, to destroy, to overthrow, to plant, and to build. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. There are people listening to this message using human ideas and human thinking. And human thinking is what needs to be uprooted and replaced 
with divine thoughts and divine ideas. Other prophets would say, your thoughts are not my thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. His friend Isaiah would say that all the time, and he would agree with that message today. If you think God can't speak to you, that idea did not come from God. It came from Satan. I pull that lie out of your spirit, and I replace it with the truth that God made you to speak to you. That's what he wants. That's his heart's desire for you and for me. And God did more than touch Jeremiah's mouth. He opened his eyes to see pictures of what he is about to do. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 11. The Lord came to me and he said, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I see an almond branch. I want to just give you as a practice or exercise now in the room or even later today. Just ask God. Uh, hear that question. What do you see? Ask God to show you something. You'll be amazed at the picture that you will see, and God will begin to speak to you through that picture. And so uh, he said, I see an almond tree. And this is a very famous row of almond trees, and almond trees are so beautiful in the Middle East. Almond trees always produce the first blossom of the new season. The almond tree is sometimes called the awakening tree because it awakens people to a new season in life. And God wants to awaken you to a new season. There's something deeper in your life that's going on right now, and God is awakening you, something inside of you. Now, when Aaron's authority was challenged in the wilderness, uh, Moses commanded all the heads of the tribes to bring a branch made out of an almond, uh, bring a rod made out of an almond branch and bring it to the tent of meeting. And Aaron brought his and put it there. And then the next day when they came back, Aaron's rod, which was a dried up piece of wood, had an almond bud coming out of it. And this is how the people would know the authority of God, the power of God, the presence of God, was on Aaron's life. And so Jeremiah, who thought he was going in the priesthood direction or would have the authority of the priest, found out that this budding almond was his sign of authority uh, before the people as he sought. And uh, so what a beautiful thing that is when we see this uh, authority now coming on Jeremiah and he speaks in ways that people could never have imagined. The Lord said to him, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. And when God gives you a word, he will watch over that word and cause that word to come about in time. Pastor Margaret and I have received many prophetic words, and some of them have come about and some of them are pending, but we're trusting God to fulfill all of the good words that have been spoken over us. So the Lord spoke to Jeremiah a second time, and he said, what do you see? And he said, I see a boiling pot facing away from the north. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 13, a boiling pot facing away from the north indicates the direction from which the city of Jerusalem will one day be attacked. All of the enemies, even if you came from the south from Egypt, you went past the city, went up to the north and came down. Babylon, they came around the Fertile Crescent and came down. And that attack came 558 years before the birth of Christ. Now the words and the pictures that God gave to Jeremiah established him as a powerful prophet. And God's call to Jeremiah ended with these words. Dress yourself for work. Arise and say to them everything I command you. Do not be dismayed by them, lest I dismay you before them. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11. If you're afraid, they will be afraid. If you're afraid, they will not be afraid. If you are not afraid, they will be afraid. That's the message that God gave to Jeremiah a release into you, boldness, boldness of the Holy Spirit. Today an invitation is being extended to you to dress up spiritually for the work that God has called us to do. Listen to his voice and do what he calls you to do. Repent of the lie that you cannot hear from God or have a relationship with him. 
Jesus died for you in your place so that you can have a relationship with God. Ask God to open your eyes and your ears to hear his voice and do his will. Say with me, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me in my place on the cross. Today I accept you as my Savior. If you just felt the presence of Jesus come upon you, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Father, thank you for helping us to find our destiny in you. Help us to believe and obey your instructions for our lives. Thank you for the example of Jeremiah. Help us to hear your voice and follow. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.